So let's talk about some of these AEW releases. I mean, why not, right? We usually like to um, shoot the shit when it comes to WWE releasing people, which we expect to happen pretty soon. And we always sit there and analyze, hey, are any of these people potential fits for TNA? And this is no different. This, um, you know, it's reported that AEW released several wrestlers. And these are not huge names. They're not, um, they're not game changers, you know. But I, I do think that there is a little more value for TNA to, instead of trying to hit the home run all the time, I think there's some value in, you know, checking out the waiver wire from some of these guys that just did, really just didn't get an opportunity. And I've said that especially about some of the people that NXT releases that we never really see on television or have minimal time, you know, there are some 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 guys you take a chance out there, throw that shit against the wall, and see if it sticks. So to go over this list real quick, this is, um, I mean, TNA could benefit from from some of these guys, um, but I, but this isn't the sexiest list in the world. So the first one is the boys, Dalton Castle's boys. I believe on Ring of Honor television, he lost custody of them or something along those lines. And I think he is going through a bit of a gimmick change over there at the moment. So um, I guess they weren't needed. What is needed is tag teams and TNA. But I I mean, would these guys come over as the boys? Would they switch the gimmick up? I, I don't know. I would imagine they would be the boys. They're, they, they're not coming from WWE television who owns their intellectual property. So, I honest to God could see TNA bringing bringing these people in, um, even if it's for a short amount of time. Kind of like you know how Sunny Kiss showed up, so I I, I could see that happen. Um, Dasha, she was a backstage announcer. They they were using her less and less, especially once Renee uh, Paquette got uh, got back there. And I believe she, I want to say she does some ring announcing as well. I get I get some of the the women backstage there confused. They, I get backstage interviewers viewers confused in these bigger companies. So the companies so they're all just kind of interchangeable. But I want to say she's a uh, does ring announcing and um, she can wrestle. I believe they used her once or twice, but they just never put her in that role. So you know that that's one of those that's one of those situations. You take a swing, um, it, it can't hurt. You know. Jose, the assistant, I'm pretty sure that dude wrestles somewhere. He has to because that fool's jacked. But he was not used as a wrestler. But I don't see him having any any use in TNA. I, I, I couldn't see it. Uh, I don't know how to say this dude's name, Jorah Joel. He was – I had no clue that dude was even still there. Um some people know a little bit more about his indie work. I just know that he was a part of the Hardy family office for a small amount of time. And his role was so insignificant that people, you know, he was in the stable, but no one knew who the fuck he was or what his name was, you know, but um, do they take a swing? I don't know. I honest to God, don't know if I've ever, ever seen him wrestle, but it seems some people do like his work. Anthony Henry, he can work too. He was in the workhorseman, but I mean, it was a job or stable. He posted on social media. He's pretty devastated from the release, but I mean, I, I can't think, I can't say the dude wrestled on television more than two or three times. He did a lot of AEW dark stuff. Uh, I'm just, it seemed like it was a complete shock to him, which I don't, I don't know why it would be. He's a little generic for my taste. You know, I, I could see him in more of an NWA, MLW type of thing. But, you know, he is someone that could potentially fit. I mean, there, as again, there's nothing sexy on here. Gravity, didn't even know he was under contract. He's a luchador. TNA doesn't have a great history of luchadors. They like to use luchadors, but they don't necessarily win or do anything. I mean, we're hearing Laredo Kid speak for the first time in like nine years, um, being on and off with the company. So um, he's okay though. He's, he's not bad. He, he's a, he's a pretty decent luchador, but if he's available to be signed, you know, 
I, I guess it could be a possibility. I want to say he was part of AAA, so uh, he likely would just go back there. And then the three kind of bigger names, Stu Grayson being one of them, who's pictured in front of you. I used to be – he's real good. He's very talented. Uh, I used to be a real big fan when he was part of Dark Order, when Dark Order was cool, or at least I thought it was cool. And he actually got released once. or I don't. He wasn't necessarily released. They just didn't renew his deal. Wanted him to stay on a per appearance. Um, he didn't want to do that, so he left. And then they did bring him – and they ultimately did bring him back as part of the Dark Order that lasted about four minutes. And then they put him with the Righteous, and then he was no longer with them. He is actually someone who could probably step in um, and if you gave him an opportunity, could probably wrestle at the top of the card. Uh, I, I don't think he necessarily has like the superstar look or the superstar promo ability, but uh, he's very good. Um, you know, I, I could see like he would be in the X division for like an ultimate X match and then kind of move on from there, you know, but he is someone, if there's anyone on this list that's kind of like, hey, maybe maybe take a shot on this dude, Stu Grayson would be a pretty decent one. Comes with a little bit of a name. He comes with a bigger name than the other guys on here. Parker Boudreau, um, I, I can 100% see them bringing him in. He can't really work. You know, NXT appeared to give up on him. AEW appeared to give up on him. They He was part of the Mogul Affiliates. He wrestled one match on TV, and it was so bad that they just pulled him from the group. Um, he he came off on TV like the way you're wrestling with you and your brother when you're like five years old, and you're just kind of fake wrestling and fake oh, screaming, and you know it, it was so just not genuine, wasn't good. But I've been hearing very good things on um, podcasts of people who have worked with him or who have booked him. You know, he's done some indie, indie work that he genuinely desires to be better and to improve and that he's a good guy. I mean, is TNA the next company to take a take a swing at him? Maybe. I can 100% see MLW go for him. I uh, Totally. This whole list is a little more up MLW's alley than, than uh, TNA. And then I, I would imagine NWA will look at a couple of these guys because this recent episode of NWA has the one of the worst cards I have ever seen. Um, so they need talent as well. But they're they're <laughs> the the card for the episode this week is so fucking bad. So you know they they might be more aggressive with this group than than a TNA. Um, well, to go back to Stu Grayson, I was saying he didn't want to do per day for AEW, so it's kind of hard to imagine him wanting to do a per date for TNA. But uh, Parker Boudreaux, just kind of going back to him. I, I mean, people are going to take keep taking chances at this guy. He's doing uh, AAA at the moment, I believe. Uh, people are going to take keep taking chances, hoping that they strike gold. So TNA could be the next company to do that. But I also see him wrestling PCO and Khan and um, the same shit. For guys of that size. And then finally there's Slim J. Um, he was like this. Uh, Malibu's most wanted B-Rad looking ass dude. And. He he kind of ple almost pleaded on social media after he's released. You know. Looking for someone to hire him. <laughs> looking for someone to book him. He 100% will end up on someone's television. Um. Again, probably like the MLW NWA circuit of wrestling, but he's he's another dude you could give a shot to. But he's the gimmick that you saw. He mainly did Ring of Honor work. Uh, the the gimmick you saw there would not be what he would what he would bring aboard. I don't know if um, he usually goes by Slim J or if that was something they they created, but. He even said himself his gimmick was trash. And this dude was on like every episode of Ring of Honor, it felt like. There was a point where I was really watching it. I was subscribed to Honor Club and I was, you know, out of curiosity, I was checking out the show and I was like, this dude is on every fucking episode. And I didn't really care for him, but he can wrestle. And of anyone on this list that you would take a shot at and say, hey, come here, just reinvent yourself, do what you know you can do. 
This this is probably the dude on here that you take that take that chance with. You know, with these other guys, you you already kind of know what you're getting from them. But but Slim J, he's the one that you could bring him on and really repackage and let him just write his own story. You know, so do I think any of statistically, if you're just looking at numbers, chances are someone from this list is going to show up. I would just be so fucking shocked if the, if there was no one. But are they game changers? Are they anyone? I mean, there's a few game changers in wrestling, but I just mean, game, when I say game changer, I mean, I don't think there's anyone here that the TNA fan base would lose their minds over and get really excited about. Maybe Stu Grayson. I think he's, you know, the most popular name on this list. But these are these are just not, these aren't studs. These aren't stars. But I, I would be totally shocked if TNA didn't bring someone in. So we'll see what happens. So let me know what you think. Who do you want to see come through? Who do you think will come through?